Good morning, gang. Happy Friday. So we made it to the end of another week. So by now, you have all heard about yesterday's Supreme Court decision and the Supreme Court overturning Potato Joe's mandate on private employers that have over 100 employees. So that's a good thing. Now, just so y'all are aware of that, that does not mean that private employers cannot still do it on their own. It just means that the government can't force them to do it. So now it is back to a decision of the company. All right. And of course, as you probably saw Biden's speech yesterday after the decision came down, he's imploring businesses to do the right thing and force everybody to do it anyway. Okay. That's the company's decision. Whether or not your company does it depends on whether or not they're going to keep employees. The one that did uh, pass muster with the Supreme Court, if you will, was the mandate for healthcare workers, basically for any healthcare workers that work in a facility that accepts Medicare and Medicaid which is basically everywhere, okay? You know, hospitals, doctor's offices, nursing homes, whatever would be, you know, that's, they all accept Medicare and Medicaid. So basically the medical profession is still stuck with the mandates. Now, I'm gonna give you how this affects us. I looked at the numbers this morning and over the last 28 days, 74.4% of the viewers of this channel, so nearly three quarters, were over the age of 45. And the reason I say that is because as we get older, we have a tendency to use medical services a little bit more often. Okay, It's just the way it works. Well, Biden's mandate covers 17 million health care workers that are now forced by the government to be vaccinated. So you guys know that my daughter finished school and is in the medical profession or going into. She's currently working as a CNA after getting her degree and she's got to get her hours in and she wants to go back to be a physician's assistant, a PA. So just so you guys know what a PA is, it's basically above a registered nurse, but below a doctor. Okay, so basically it's a nurse who can do a little bit more, write prescriptions, that sort of stuff, but kind of goes, you know, it's a little bit higher on the hierarchy. If you know, okay. So she was telling me, uh, while she was here, about what's going on in a hospital system that she works on up in Indiana. Now, she makes $17 an hour as a CNA. We all know, or most of us know, CNAs are drastically underpaid for what they wind up doing, okay? I mean, between dealing with irate patients, I mean, she's told me stories about trying to hold down people, being bit, being kicked, whatever would be, you know, nurses have a tough job. There is, and nurses' assistants as well. There's no doubt about it. You know, the doctor, as she said, you know, the potential patients come in, they're argumentative, they're pissed off, they're whatever it would be. They take it out on the nurse, and then when the doc doctor comes in, they're like, oh, gee, I'm just a good little patient, because the doctor is the one that writes the scripts. Okay. So that's the person that they figure is going to help. So, But the nurse is put up with a lot of shit, and so I have a boatload of respect for nurses. Okay, did before she was in the profession as well. But so she was telling me this at making $17 an hour and how busy the hospital is. And yes, some COVID patients and other typical ones, you know, between car accidents and gunshots and heart attacks and, you know, God knows what. She works in the ER. Okay. So she said she'd work her normal four 12 hour, or three 12-hour shifts, 36 hours, and she gets paid her $17 an hour. If she picks up an extra shift four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, whatever, she gets paid upwards of 50 bucks an hour, okay? So you wonder why, and this is where it affects us as preppers, as citizens of the country, so more or less as preppers, okay? 
Biden's mandate is going to cause, or is already causing, a massive shortage in medical professionals. All right, so I found the numbers on this, so you guys have an idea. The mandate has already cost, before it was even ruled on by the Supreme Court, the medical system to uh, the medical system has already lost, depending on the facility, somewhere between one and five percent of its nurses. Now, that doesn't sound like too much, okay? But I'm gonna link this here. This is a list of some of the major uh, nursing facilities, okay? Advocate Aurora Health has terminated 440 people. Bay State Health has suspended 145. Uh, let's see, where was New York one? It was in here somewhere. Uh, well, here's one. Uh, Henry Ford Health System up in Detroit, 400 people have been, uh, have voluntarily resigned because of the mandate. Uh... Houston Methodist, 153 resignations. Kaiser Permanente out in San Francisco, 2,200 people. Okay. This is what's going on with the medical profession. Now, many of you guys have heard about costs and things like that. So I want you to take a look at this, this page right here. All right. And again, I'm just going to kind of explain it. If you look at it, this is off of Career Builder. All right. If you look on the bottom, okay, the national average for a nursing job, RN, maybe an LPN or whatever would be, but let's let's say an RN, okay. But their cost, they're saying a national average for a nursing job. So, but you're talking about RNs to LPNs to God knows what, twenty-seven dollars an hour. For a national average, as you see on the bottom there, of $78,262. It's a good wage, okay? No question. But we all know there's a shortage. And, of course, we've all heard the stories about the National Guard being called in all over the place to fill in, fill in the holes. Now, of course, if there's holes in nursing, there's nobody in the National Guard. <laughs> unless they're, oh, probably, I'd say, a colonel or better, who's making $78,000, okay? So if they bring the nurses in, they're taking a pay cut. But this is the one I want you to look at. This is what my daughter was telling me about, is travel nurses, okay? I want you to look at this page. These are job openings for travel nurses that I found on one website, okay? As you see, cross-country nurses here. Now, a travel nurse is somebody that, say, lives in Union County, Tennessee, and is a nurse, and they will are willing to go anywhere. Let's just say, for example, I was a nurse. I could live here, and if you look at the very first job, I could apply for a job in Los Angeles as a Telemetry COVID-19 registered nurse and get paid $8,300 a week. Now, granted, that is the highest paying one on here, okay? $8,300 a week is over $400,000 a year. It's a lot of freaking money. Now, if you think this is just something silly, you can go look at this webpage. There are 918 pages of jobs. As you, there's 8,256 travel nurse jobs available just on this website right now. Okay, What's that going to do to your metal costs? What's that going to do to your insurance? My daughter was telling me that there are plenty of travel nurses that come in to her little hospital system in upstate Indiana. Okay. So this is what's going on. The nurses are the ones that can are moving because why would I take my job? Again, say I live here. Let's take everything on average. Okay. Why would I take my job paying $78,000 if I lived where I live when I can go make five, six times as much somewhere else? 
And yeah, like I said, that $8,300, that's the high end. There's tons of them that are $5,000 plus a week, okay? $5,000 plus a week is a quarter million bucks a year, okay? So now what are you going to have? You are going to have the medical profession move from the rural areas to the cities because the cities are going to pay more, all right? That's where the bigger hospital systems are, which again goes into what we've all talked about many times of people getting sardined into the cities. Now, if the only doctors and the only nurses, the only medical facilities are in the big cities where, gee, all the apartments are being built and, gee, all the green transportation is going to be, this is just another effort that you are not seeing openly where they are trying to force people into sardine cans, okay? But then you hear about all the stories of, well, gee, how are we going to pay for this? Like I just said, you start paying nurses a quarter million dollars to $400,000 a year, your insurance costs are going to go up. And this is where you get the Bernie Sanders, AOC, Elizabeth Warren crap, let's do Medicare for all. All right, let's get rid of private insurance. Look at this screen. This is what the Senate Committee on Medicare for All, this is, again, not a alt-right website or anything like that. This is a committee that was designed to figure out what this is going to cost. $32 trillion over the course of 10 years, okay? So that means, you know, we are going to double the federal debt, because we don't have the money, okay, in 10 years. 32 trillion divided by 10, let's take inflation out of it or whatever and just say it's $3.2 trillion a year. What are they going to have to do? Well, that will raise your income tax 20%, okay? I don't think Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or anybody like that are worried about how much they pay in taxes, okay? If they add one more zero to the end of the check they write to the end of, at, to the IRS, it ain't going to make them happy, but it's not like they're going to worry about, gee, I can't put dinner on the table this week. However, the middle class and especially the lower, the lower poor people, an increase in taxes takes food off the table, okay? 175 million people lose their private insurance. That's half the country, all right? The other half is on, either doesn't have insurance or is already on Medicare, Medicaid, whatever it would be, okay? This is where this medical issue becomes a real big problem for all of us our age. The costs are going to go way up, already have to, just because of the shortage. The mandate makes it even worse for us because it's going to raise costs even more. And then you get all this crap coming out of congressmen saying, well, if they're not vaccinated, they shouldn't be covered by insurance. We should, we should refuse them treatment. So let me see if I got this straight. We can bring people across the southern border, unvaccinated, no worries about that, and give them free medical. They've never contributed a penny to the economy. But Joe Average, who's worked his ass off for 30 years, and is now in his 50s, okay, paid his taxes, who has had a job, who's done everything, but decides to have bodily autonomy, we're going to force him to buy insurance at a very expensive rate through the ACA and then tell him we can't treat him or we won't. What's wrong with this picture? As one of you guys keeps saying, Scott, all the time, ain't democratic communism great? Been well out.